It's time now for Ask the, the, the Surgeon, brought to you by Everett Bone & Joint. Everett Bone & Joint, the best choice to get you back in the game. Learn more at everettboneandjoint.com. Ask the Surgeon, again brought to you by Everett Bone & Joint. Dr. Clay Wertheimer joins us. The topic is arthritis. So, first question, the layman, what is arthritis? Well, arthritis is a big term. It's kind of like saying, you know, what is car problems? There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of reasons you can have arthritis. The, the bottom line is arthritis is a disease or uh, a disorder of the, uh, the cartilage that coats the end of the bone. Um, but it's a lot more complicated than that, and there are a lot of different causes. And really, the disease arthritis affects every component of the joint. And you can kind of think of the joint as, um, you know, it's the junction of bones. Uh, the bones are covered with cartilage, which creates this natural running surface that's nice and smooth. Uh, the bones are joined by ligaments to coordinate the movement. Uh, and the joints are surrounded by muscle to be the motor of that joint. And the process of arthritis affects every one of those components, the muscle, the cartilage, the bone, the ligaments. It can, uh, and, and so the bottom line is the cartilage is, gets trashed. And the most common way the cartilage gets trashed is we wear out, that, uh, the cartilage kind of dies off before we die off. Um, so the joint becomes kind of rough and irregular. And when that cartilage breaks off inside the joint, it irritates the lining of the joint, and the joint makes more fluid, and the joint gets swollen, and that causes you to get stiff and sore. Uh, there are other causes of arthritis. One is you can trash your joint traumatically, like an accident. You get slammed, you get tackled, you get in a car accident, and then that cartilage from the impact or the slam can die Le- years later, or years right later, okay. or right away, uh-huh. even, you know, within days or, or weeks. And then finally, there's a whole nother group of um, causes um, where the body sort of recognizes a component of the joint uh, as foreign and attacks it, and that process of the body attacking itself dissolves or damages the cartilage. And that's what rheumatoid arthritis is about. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's that, that's kind of an autoimmune yeah. where the body kind of self-attacks its exactly. own tissue. A, a and and the, the degenerative arthritis that you talked about is what we call osteoarthritis. Yeah, osteoarthritis. And that's yeah. that's the arthritis that Wear is... Wear and tear arthritis. Yeah, just yep. Yep. Yeah. If you're that's gonna, the most common right. form of uh, arthritis. Although we're learning, you know, as we learn more about how these joints work, we're learning that some of these forms of osteoarthritis um, may have uh, been caused by early trauma or by subtle... Uh, uh, differences in the joint shape or surface that people are born with, so the forces of wear and tear are increased more than normal, and consequently the joint wears out. Yeah, good point. So m- generally speaking, the joints that you see, the wear and tear or the osteoarthritis, are usually weight-bearing joints, right, knees, the hips, hips. But in the base of the wor- thumb. Right, right. And in today's world, you know, we're seeing more gradually as people live as long as people are living. I mean, the shoulders are starting yep. to wear out yeah. and changes there, but there's some great technology out there yeah. and more and more there's advancements. Um, as, a, as an orthopedic surgeon, tell us about the cartilage. Why doesn't the body just, if it gets irritated or broken, why, don't, why doesn't the body just heal it? Yeah, you know, that's a great question. And it does when we're growing. When we're children, there's a capacity. If your cartilage gets dinged up, it can reproduce and grow. But there's something about that little computer program in the cells of the cartilage that change once our hormonal balances change and we stop growing, and we lose the capacity to repair or make new cartilage. Um, now, the surgeons have figured out some tricks to try to stimulate the body to make some scar cartilage. And one of the things you may have heard about in athletes is um, – um, uh, what's called abrasion arthroplasty or microfracture techniques. Uh, Amari Stoudemire, uh, who now plays for the Knicks, uh, when he was playing for Phoenix, he acquired post-traumatic arthritis in his knees um, and scraped off, you know, wore off uh, spots of cartilage on the weight-bearing surface of his knees. And the surgeons went in there, the orthopedic surgeons, and they did this microfracture where they actually drilled small holes through the 
a joint surface where those uh, divots uh, were, where the cartilage had been scraped off, and the holes went into the marrow. And we have stem cells in our marrow. You've heard about stem cell research. Right. Mm-hmm. That provides a pathway for those stem cells to go through the holes and kind of form a patch in that bad spot where he had arthritis, damage of the cartilage. And then uh, given the right cues, if you stay non-weight-bearing for six weeks, you move the joint, you strengthen the muscles, um, it it can turn into scar cartilage. Not quite as good as the original stuff, but you can kind of trick the body. Now with you know genetic knowledge and some of the new research, uh, there's the prospect. It hasn't quite happened yet, but the prospect that we can – uh, perhaps stimulate the body even when we're adults to renew and grow new cartilage or transplant cartilage um, that could be grown in a lab or a tissue culture. Interesting. Yeah. Does that mean that Brett Favre is going to be playing until he's 80? Yeah. <laughs> is that what that means? Well, yeah, that could possibly. There you go. Yeah. Um, you know, the, there was also a Seahawk that had microfracture last year. I think Pickett, was that the name? He was a lineman. I know he, uh-huh. had, he had some knee problems. He did yeah. microfracture surgery on him. Right. But does the cartilage in its own right have a good blood supply? The cartilage does not really have a blood supply. Most of the cartilage, uh, the articular cartilage, that... Uh, so when you say of, articular... That's the f- stuff that coats the end of the bone. And like that's what the, you see on the end of the drumstick when you crack right, the drumstick over right. on the turkey, that kind of bluish white stuff. That stuff is really amazing. It's more resilient than any material that humans have ever devised. I mean, you know, it's really, really tough stuff. It has very low friction. Um, it's mostly filled with water. It has this complex kind of chemical uh, configuration that brings in water molecules and packs them in between uh, the structure and creates this fantastic resilient surface. But um, it doesn't really have a blood supply. The cells that make that stuff get its get their nutrition from the joint fluid, and uh, and. So, uh, and they have a certain lifespan, and when they're done, they're done, and then you start, you know, your joint starts wearing out. So that's the interesting part about it, is yeah. just we're all going to wear out in some shape or form, yeah. and some people just wear out quicker. I mean... Uh, but, you know, you know, what I was saying earlier, Shannon, of, like, appreciating that um, really this disease arthritis involves all the components of the joint, mm-hmm. so treatment of it um, really needs to involve all those components, so... People who keep their muscles strong and keep the joints supple, they do better who have arthritis than people who don't. Um, People whose ligaments are reconstructed, if they tear them, uh, in general, do better than people who don't because we can kind of restore that uh, joint, you know, movement and coordination and reduce some of the forces on the joint. And now we're um, learning that there's a component in joint fluid itself that uh, the drug companies have been able to figure out um, that lubricates the joint. And we can stick it into people who have uh, sore knees. It's it's FDA approved for sore knees. Is that the Synvisc? Knees. Yeah, Synvisc or Hylgan or Uflexa. There's lots of brands out there. Is, and, is and that, that the, the rooster thing? Rooster combs. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's actually That's made right. from either rooster combs. Some scientist, you know, research guy doing mm-hmm. basic research, uh, found that, huh, this component that I – you know, found in the joint doesn't cause inflammation, and it seems to provide lubrication. And then they first experimented in racehorses. They began squirting in these racehorses that were getting arthritic and losing their performance, and they found that, wow, they're running a little better, you know. That looks pretty good. And and you can have, is is there a a parameter of how many injections you can get? I mean, if I'm that Mm -hmm. middle-aged, 50-year-old male, I'm I'm not there yet, so don't look at me like that. (laughs) But if I'm I'm that that, that person out there that likes to ski and run, and I've got that little bit of wear and tear in my knee, yeah. But I'm not I'm not at a total joint or a, a partial joint replacement. Right. I just need some time. Is that an appropriate methodology? I think methodology? It is. I think there's a role for it. You know, it's expensive because uh-huh. it's it's synthesized and made in the lab, um, and uh, it's only approved for knees that are arthritic. Um, but it can be a very good way to temporarily uh-huh. stave off some of the symptoms that people feel: the pain, the swelling, um, the irritation the, um, from arthritic. Uh, process in the knees and and you know I've had uh, uh, patients that you know get up to one or two years of relief from a series of injections. So. Well, that's 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 any kind of relief when it right. comes to arthritis. How many how many injections is a series? Well, it depends. Like some of the products are just one shot, mm-hmm. some are three, some are five, and hmm. no one's really demonstrated that 
any one of those are better than the other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's interesting because I don't think people understand, and they, they they probably wouldn't unless they took anatomy and physiology, but you talked about the lubrication mm-hmm. of the joint. All of our joints are what we call synovial joints, mm-hmm. and those joints have fluid inside them. That's right, and, and the th- fluid is really important to both the nutrition of the cartilage right. and the lubrication to, just like you put you know grease in your bearings, uh, or you got to have oil on your chains, so, right? You know, right. on your bike. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that makes that's important. Yeah. So I mean, that when that joint's irritated and becomes like that arthritic joint, that it is, when you hear it's bone on bone. That's uh, that's bad. Yeah, yeah that's, that's bad. That's bad. And yeah. and you know, there's a whole process. I mean, like I tried to. Uh, say the bottom line of this arthritis stuff, even though it's uh, multiple causes, is that the cartilage is worn out or wearing out. But there's all this other complex changes that occur, including changes in the joint fluid. You lose that lubricant, so that's why by putting it back into the joint, it can help. Um, you lose your muscle strength and power. Um, sometimes the the bone itself, uh, there are changes in the bone where you know you you the bone sees more load. And um, unlike the cartilage, the bone in adults can grow, so it grows, it thickens, it forms a bone spur, and then those bone spurs further cause, you know, stretching and distortion of the soft tissues around the joint and cause the joint to stiffen. So it's really a pretty complex process. It's very complex. Yeah. I can, mean, can I ask a question? Sure. My grandma had arthritis. My yeah. mom has arthritis. I'm going to get arthritis well, no matter what? You know, that's a great question, Tom. I mean, uh Probably there is a genetic component to all forms of arthritis, the wear and tear form of arthritis as well as the autoimmune form. Um, But the autoimmune forms are more linked, uh, like rheumatoid arthritis or ankylosing spondylitis or uh, Reiter's syndrome, uh, these kind of uh, inflammatory arthritis that we call them, uh, they're... um, uh, they're more genetically linked than the osteoarthritis. There are so many other factors that influence osteoarthritis, but genetics is probably one of them. Because, like I was saying earlier, there is a little computer program in those cartilage cells that you inherited from your mom and dad. And at some point in your lifespan, um, that computer program is likely to stop functioning very well uh, before the rest of your cells do. So your joints get arthritic. You get, uh, you know, stiff and, and, uh, and, uh, hobbled by it. So how do I head that off at the pass? Well, uh, another good question. This guy is shooting yeah. on yeah. the show yeah. regularly. <laughs> he, well, he asks questions every yeah. few weeks. He, uh, his, his job is to push the right button. Make sure the mics work. Yeah, make sure the mics work. <laughs> One thing we're really, really discovering is that arthritis of the knees, particularly, is related to weight and overweight. Mm -hmm. Um, This happens to be shown more convincingly in women than men, but it it makes sense that it affects both sexes. And controlling your weight and keeping your weight uh, in in line and away from being, you know, obese and overly heavy has a great deal to do with arthritis. Uh, I was at a national conference, the orthopedic conference, uh, last spring in San Diego, and this guy got up and gave a paper where he had studied um, patients having bariatric surgery, you know, to yep. super yep. weight loss. And he measured their, um, using a standardized test, and measured these people's complaints about knee pain. And they almost all of them had knee pain. All of them had bad knees. Then he remeasured them a year later when they had lost anywhere from 50 to, you know, like 150 pounds. And all of them improved almost as significant a change and improvement in knee symptoms as those people when you measure after before and after a total knee replacement. And they had had no orthopedic surgery, no care other than weight loss. Just the weight loss. Yeah. So weight has a lot to do with it. Well, just the compression. If you think about yeah. the weight and the compression on the joints, and yeah. again, it's a weight-bearing joint. So that's interesting. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. yeah. And, and then the other thing that is related, and I'm seeing more and more in my practice, is a condition called gout. I don't know if oh, you've yeah. had any of the docs come on and talk right about Right there. Gout. Thank you. Hello. Yeah. yeah. So keeping that in check, because um, if your gout, you know, is this condition where these crystals sort of fall out of solution, just like if you put too much sugar in your iced tea and you get a bunch of crystals in the bottom of the glass, right. too much of this uric acid, uh-huh. if you have gout, will fall out of solution out of your bloodstream and be deposited in the joint. And the immune system in the joint doesn't like those crystals and will attack it and create chronic inflammation, 
release enzymes that are bad for the cartilage and, and contribute to the wear and tear. Yeah, and that's a key word in today's world. We're finding out that inflammation causes a lot of problems right. in a lot of areas. And that's why it, it, the anti-inflammatory medicines, right. you know, like Motrin and Advil, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories have a role in this arthritis because that inflammation, that reaction to the breakdown of the cartilage um, is a big part of the pain and swelling that you feel from arthritis. So interesting. So here's the deal. I mean, you've probably seen a lot of inside of people's knees. Yeah. And so if you're a 50-year-old guy and you've been active, I mean, are you going to have a little arthritis? It's just expected. I mean, when you look in there. Well, like Tom said, I mean, you know, it depends on your familiar background. Uh It depends on what you've done with those knees over your 50 years and whether you may have trashed your meniscus when you were playing high school football. Good point, yeah. You know, because that meniscus, that cartilage pad, we've talked about that a lot. It's a favorite topic of orthopedic surgeons, but it has a lot to do with the health of that particular joint. Um, or in the shoulders case, what, what condition your rotator cuff is in, you know, or your labrum. Um, so all those things, there's so many factors, but, uh, yeah, there's a pretty good chance that by the time you're 50 or 55, you've got some damaged cartilage in your joint. But in closing, the key that you mentioned, and I think it's important that we kind of summarize this, is if you have a little arthritis and your joints are stiff and sore, don't stop moving. Yeah. Stay Exercise active. Is Exercise. Great Exercise. Range Stretching, of motion, strength, strength, swimming, balance, swimming, yeah. biking, yeah. non compression type stuff. Yeah. The elliptical trainer is great. So yeah. keep get your out there. weight in check. You know, interesting. So if you want more information, particularly on that synvisc injection, the, the rooster comb we just talked yeah. about. I mean, everbornandjoint.com, is that it? Yeah. All right. That's the surgeon. Wow. It's, yeah. you know. Got to have him back. Uh, we yeah. might have him back. He, yeah, he's <laughs> he's the uh, 